Okay, folks, it's been a little while since the last time uh, I did a video on Voice Meter Banana and some of the options that are available to you uh, to use it for streaming and uh, recording and the like. Um, they've made some significant improvements and they've also added a few uh, side compatible programs with it um, that add some very interesting uh, options for you and um, we're going to take a look at some of those today. So let's get started. Yeah! So, how did I do that? Well, as you can see here on the screen, I've got voice meter, and you can see my mic moving where it always is. Uh, below voice meter, you see VB audio network configuration. We'll look at that in just a minute. Uh, the thing that you just heard, however, happened to come from macro remotes. Uh, so macro buttons are something that they have added uh, compatibility for. Uh, you can see here in the top of the newest uh, version of voice meter, there is a one blue R and three uh, dark black R's. Uh, it took me a while to figure out what that was when I first got a hold of it, um, but it is the voice meter remote macro buttons. Um, you can write custom buttons. Uh, it's as easy as right clicking. And now there's some information in here that you can see. Uh, the first button is titled mute, uh, mute one, and there's a shortcut key. Uh, if you look at my channel, my mic goes away. Uh, so what this does is it's pretty straightforward. You can name it, you can give it a sub name, uh, whether it is a latching button or a push and hold button. So you could actually make this be a push to talk. If you have no other push to talk functionality, you can then give it a keyboard shortcut and an exclusivity key. It's got uh, quite a number of options here. I just put it as zero because I don't use it, but I know where it is. So the code here uh, is telling you, is telling voice meter what to do. Uh, there is a plethora of commands uh, and they are available on uh, voice meter forums here. The uh, remote API package, you can download it here, uh, and it has a PDF file in it that shows you all of the um, command options. Uh, and we're just going to look at uh, muting for right now and uh, another one, the scream that you heard. It's pretty simple. Strip zero is the first strip, one, two, and three. I'm actually gesturing with my hand like you can see it. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I can't remember if these are actually titled strip or bus, um, but all that information, like I said, is available in the um, development kit uh, PDF file. Then we go to this button. See, this mode is two positions, latching on and off. This one is just push and hold. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how you do that, type push button, initial state, you want the recorder stopped, uh, unless you want it to play the minute you open the uh, macro button, which is also just fine. Um, so the first request is load this WAV file and immediately play it. Now you can have it set up so that when you push the button, it loads the file, and when you release the button, it plays the file. These these are all choices that you can make depending on what you input here. Again, info in the PDF connected to the development kit. Uh, so you can have four of these stacked up here. One, two, three, and four. They will auto-attach once you open them. It is part of the current version, which is 2.025. Uh, it was available prior till now. This just happens to be the one that I'm working on. Um, but it is there and it is um, quite functional. I'm going to turn that off for the time being. And you see that the uh, remote first button went away, so it's no longer connected. Uh, this is still loaded, however, and I can finish it out. Uh, all right, so let's look now at this VB audio network configuration screen. So you can access this by clicking on VBAN over here. Um, and you'll actually see that it is currently set to on. Um, part of what's interesting about this is they made local network streaming. 
So you can have a computer in some other part of your house on your network and stream music to every other computer that happens to be running um, VBAN. Now, what you see here is the VBAN receptors, which I have one and I will show you in just a moment. Um, what I'm going to show you initially here is uh, how to set up the outbound stream. Now you can see it also has um, incoming streams and outgoing streams. You can do two in streams because those are set up for only the virtual buses here and here. But you can set up outbound streams from any of your buses. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, you want to give your IP address uh, where it's going. You can see that I'm sending this somewhere and I'm sending it at optimal speed, optimal fast through very slow. I have a full gigabit network in my house, so optimal uses it. Uh, it sounds as good as it can. Um, so it's an audio network protocol. Uh, you can find all this information right there on VB Audio's website again. Um, and just some information on how to set it up. And then the receptor. I have a receptor right here. Um, so currently I have my receptor set up. Uh, this is sent from the second machine, which I'm going to bring up, and I'm going to show you the two of them playing with each other using some remote, remote desktop trickery. Um, but that machine is currently playing music, and it's muted here. So I will turn it on and you guys will hear it. Woo, dance music. I just have an auto DJ running on the internet. You can see it's kind of uh, glitching a little bit and it's saying an over, underrun or an overrun. Um, I'm sending a lot of data just to prove a point. Um, so there's all this information. It has all the virtual patches, it has all the buffering that you can set up, network quality, etc. Uh, actually, I didn't realize that I had network set up too fast. I should set that to optimal and it'll auto adjust on its own. Um, you also may see that it's running eight channels. It's only two channels. Uh, I use the, the uh, down mix on the other machine because I want to show you a little bit about 8-channel recording as well. Um, let's get that back. All right. So this is the music coming. I have it set up to the aux input. Aux input comes over here, goes out to B2, which is you guys, uh, and then my speakers and so on and so forth. You're probably hearing an echo a little bit. Fine, don't worry about it. So, I'm going to mute that again. Now it's time for a little bit of uh, remote desktop trickery. This desktop over here is the other computer, which currently you can see is playing some music here on Party Cloud, which is kind of fun and silly. And that is playing uh, right here into the normal desktop channel and it is hitting B2 which I use B2 again to send it out so you see over here outgoing stream bus B2 to main excuse me to main computer uh, and oh I was mistaken if you put 0.255 on your IP address it will send it everywhere so any machine on my network can see this stream listen to this stream to be more correct uh, and I do have it set up for eight channels like I was saying um, for reasons I will get to later now the other thing you may see here is incoming stream mic from point two and that is going in right here so it's not going out anywhere but this is just a demonstration that you can send it in two directions at once we go back over to the main machine here you can see that this is what I'm talking about this is the other half of this stream right here so just to give you an idea I'm running eight channels one way one channel and uh, two channels the other way uh, it's gigabit and 
it's working pretty well. You can see there's some underruns, some errors on the mic. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that is. I think I have some mismatched settings. No, they're both set for optimal. But just to give you uh, an example, it does work both ways simultaneously. Um, so you could be playing uh, a multiplayer game in your house on a LAN, perhaps, and not have to connect to a mumble server. There's options. A recording studio, if you're entirely digital, I wouldn't you know, bank my, my work, my life, on this particular setup, but you can certainly communicate this way. All right, so let's get rid of that uh, desktop there. So, I said I was running eight channel music so that I could uh, do some recording trickery and, and show you some of this eight channel stuff. So if we right click on the recorder, BWF, that's the file type I was looking for. BWF is essentially an eight track wave file it's an interesting little device so when you get into your recording options you can either pre-record inputs and it is essentially pre-fader on physical input one two three virtual input one or two or post fader outputs and this is the five on your right one two three four five um, you can change your file type wave bwf AIFF or MP3, sample rate, resolution, uh, the playback gain is uh, uh, obviously just for playback. Uh, you can set your channels. You can only set up to eight channels on your output buses because your input buses are two channel primarily. Uh, your regular and aux are eight channel but for whatever reason they don't allow that so you can set this up for eight channels uh, and I gotta close this and I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn on that music again woohoo you can see it here metering up I'm gonna hit record and we're gonna listen to this for a second um, so essentially what this will do um, because I have it on stereo repeat, essentially it's channel 1, 2, left, right, 3, 4, left, right, etc, etc. So you're not going to hear anything different, but I'm going to show you the difference. Um, and hopefully that'll be enough for you to get the idea. Alright, so we're going to do that. And then after you're done recording, you have to come in here and inject the cassette. Otherwise you can't do any edits. Um... So I have to open this folder. Hang on one second. You will see here that I just opened up that file. It took me a minute. I wasn't prepared for that. And you see here record all these here on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert these into a multi-track. So this is uh, the editing program I have here is Cool Edit Pro. It's fast, it's simple, it's uh, it does the job. So there it is. Now, um, trust me when I say it's eight tracks stereo repeated. You can see here I'm simply soloing each track and it's still playing the same music. Eight tracks. So how does that help you? Uh, it depends on what you're recording. So you can set composite channels up so that your first channel is your microphone in left, for instance. Your second channel could be your game. So you would have an independent channel here, and then in four, four is your uh, your default if you've set up voice meter to be your default sound card, which I highly recommend that you do. Your next channel could be left, right, and if you're playing a surround sound game, center, sub, surround, side left, side right, back left, back right, depending on what you've got set up. Uh, and then you have some music coming in, and you want to have your music here. You can have music left and right. I meant to set that one, and that one to be left and right. So now when you record, and if all of that is on B2, 
you can bring it into a sound editing program like this one. Uh, the volume on one of the tracks, way down, way up. You can take your voice, make it louder here. Uh, if you're any good at editing um, audio, you can go into the individual wave block, uh, chop out sections that you don't want. Uh, say, replace with silence here. And you go back and say that's your phone rang. But you didn't want to cut the audio out. So you just muted this little section of your voice uh, while the game audio continued. Um, if your microphone picked up your, your phone ringing and you didn't get a chance to um, mute your mic quick enough. You can go in and edit just your mic track. But it's all in sync because it was all recorded at exactly the same time. Um, this is really good for uh, post-podcast work. If you're not broadcasting live, um, you have everybody's voice track set up right here, especially if you're using inputs 1, 2, and 3 as microphone 1, 2, and 3. You can kind of adjust everybody after the fact. But that's, that's just, you know, just an option that you have if you record this way. So this time I made that one track completely loud compared to everything else. Uh, so that's pretty much the new stuff uh, that I found. Uh, so you've got, like I said, you've got tape recorder settings. Uh, so in here, again, you have channel options. Um, you can pick where it goes. Oh, and the other thing, you have independent controls. And again, the same as possible with mix downs and mono, um, just like it's an extra bus, but it has to go somewhere. Um, one of the things that I actually do is my HDMI monitor in front of me uh, has audio, so sometimes I just put the music to the monitor and it bypasses all of the rest of this mixing. Just choices, you have as many outputs as you do audio devices. So and that there, um, again all of this stuff is vb-audio.com um, and they have virtual audio cables which I use extensively in my setup um, and information on everything, voice meter which is the smaller lighter version and everything you can do in banana you can do in voice meter it's just shrunken. There's only two outs versus five and there's only two hard ins and one virtual in but it runs exactly the same way. It's lighter weight. Uh, you get it automatically um, when you download Voice Meter Banana. You get both. Uh, and then, of course, on the forums, they have all kinds of information for you as well. Um, I was here for the remote protocols just so I could make sure I set up that uh, screen properly. Uh, and they have information on the network protocols. Um, so, yeah, that's... Uh, that's about it. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I know I got a bunch of likes and, and uh, views on my last video, and hopefully I get as many, if not more, on this one. Take care.